So from last week then we looked at these equations of motion here. Linear equations of motion, linear in a straight line. And we compared them with some equations of motion for angular motion, something like this rotating anticlockwise by convention. And we have things like omega, which stands for angular velocity. We have things like theta, which stands for Paul? angle, right. We have things like alpha that stands for angular, yeah, angular acceleration. So the equivalent, there are equivalent formulae for angular motion. You, and if you compare them, as they're written there, they compare exactly. We had also these um, other formulae that are useful that we've got on our, hmm, what's going on here, that got on our um, formula sheet, the relationship between angular velocity and frequency, we might need to know. Um, that the average angular velocity is the total angle turned through divided by the time that that took. And the equivalent in linear, the average velocity is the total displacement divided by the time. And we talked about those sorts of things. So I thought I'd just start off by just summarising some of the things we were looking at last week. Omega, alpha and theta, what they are, what they're measured in, radians per second, radians per second squared. And this little formula here that's often used, if I want to know the number of turns I've taken, that's theta divided by 2 pi. Why? Because there's 2 pi radians in a full circle. So if I divide the total angle by the total, the angles in a full circle, I've got the number of turns, haven't I? So if the total angle is 4 pi, divide that by 2 pi, answer 2. So two complete turns. And so that's where the formula comes from. There's a relationship between the linear and angular motion, which you might expect, actually, if you think about it. We've got a wheel here that's turning. And if this thing's rotating, you can imagine if we ignore any slip here, so there's, there's no sliding along that surface as the wheel turns, it's going to move along. So there's a relationship between the angular velocity and the linear velocity. And these formulae show us that relation. The linear velocity equals the angular velocity times the radius of the turn. And you can derive that, actually, just by thinking about what we mean by angular velocity and bearing in mind that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. I'll leave you to think about that, because if you think about it, if I, it's gone one complete turn in this diagram, say, then how far has it gone? The circumference of the circle. And so I can actually relate the velocity to the angular velocity using that idea. Similarly, there's a relationship between the acceleration and the angular acceleration, and I've just restated those formulae down there for omega and theta. So these formulae are going to be useful to us, and might, we might want to add them to our recipe of formulae that we've got. What you don't have, in your booklet, you've got these examples, so I've not included them in the handout, but if you look at the booklet that came with this on equations of motion, and look for example one, we just want to have a look at that now. Mm -hmm. 